presentation where, as you can see, the Apple TV presentation. Uh, thank you very much for coming. I apologize for uh, running a little late. We're trying to get the uh, equipment set up properly. Um, and I goofed up and, and enabled something that I wasn't supposed to. Um, generally, when I, like, when I do these presentations, I like being in front of the audience, like, you know, walking around. I usually have a wireless mic or in the room's uh, an adequate size so that I could actually project. But we got a really loud crowd next to us. So we're going to go ahead and uh, do it this way. So um, the title of this presentation, I'm turning this on now, is coming up. is uh, iPads. Who needs them, actually? This presentation is actually going to be done entirely on this iPad. Um, and without any PowerPoint or keynote slides like you're traditionally used to. Um, I like to present this like in a dynamic environment, so we're not just going to go slide next, slide next, slide next. I find that to be an improper use of technology, because you could do so much more than just PowerPoint with this device. So, uh, so basically what I've done is I've, do, I've put together a presentation that's very dynamic. I'm going to be bouncing around the house, I'm going to be showing you various things uh, throughout it, and I'm going to be showing you uh, how to basically use it uh, uh, effectively. So, um, so, that, so, so other than these few slides, we're going to be doing this, and, and I also have it wireless. So you know, if I were to, able to be walking around the, the classroom, that's to simulate like you know, I'm a teacher, I'm walking around the classroom, and I'm uh, basically uh, using this device uh, roaming around uh, wirelessly. So, uh, yes? Are you also using Apple TV? What was that? You're also using Apple TV? Yes, and I'll go over that when I'm going through the presentation of how, I'm, how I've done this uh, uh, crazy setup here. And do you have a special app to connect to that? or how to uh, No, there isn't actually, so I'll show you how, how, how to do that. Okay. So, so without further ado, um, how many of you here made it to the opening general session? Okay, a good number of you. Um, uh, and uh, for those of you who did, gosh, you, know, you guys slept in pretty pretty late, didn't you? <laughs> um, uh, for those of you who did it, I spoke uh, uh, and I uh, made some announcements during the opening general session, and I was really really nervous, if you can tell. Um, my hands, my palms were all sweaty and, and everything like that. Um, but basically, I made a general announcement, and, and I mentioned that um, that um, I'm, I'm basically not of the most academic, uh, I didn't come from an academic, you know, I didn't go to like an you know, Ivy League college or anything like that. Uh, I did go to state college, like, you know, and I uh, had problems like, you know, reading, you know, when I was in school. And, um, and I also had like, you know, an attention deficit disorder. But thank goodness, because uh, my parents were really poor. I grew up in a Chinese restaurant, so they never got a chance to take me to get put, be put on meds. So actually what I did was I turned my greatest, uh, deficiency into my greatest, asset, my, my greatest asset, because I'm able to absorb information and be able to think in, in a multi-dimensional fashion that most people can't, So because I had to work through that problem. Um, that's why in my age, you know, even though I'm older than, mo than most of the kids, I'm able to, to absorb and facilitate technology like they do, because they're, they're used to that environment. And I, I was fortunately, uh, I was, I guess, born to, uh, too early. So, so that was uh, what I mentioned uh, in the session. Um, so I just want to kind of give you a little background about, about me. Um, I have a business called KP Education Systems. And basically, our business is in the pr process of uh, developing online cloud-based technology. So I've been using iPads uh, as a primary means to be able to deploy uh, a student-centered environment. And I'll have a few moments to show you, kind of show you that information because it, they work, it works perfectly and beautifully on the iPad. So uh, with that, um, I'm going to say uh, who's here. So first off. Uh, uh, secondary teachers here, raise your hands. All right, great. Half room. Post-secondary teachers, anybody here from post-secondary? Okay, good. Uh, smattering. All right, so any implementers in here? Anybody who's actually implemented the iPads as a one-to-one -one solution in the classroom? Oh, cool, cool. You guys are the pioneers. Are you having a lot of, uh, of challenges trying to get that to work, or is it just a quick uh, little shadow answer? Is it going great, or? Okay. No problems, just wanting to know how to use it more. How to maximize the usage of it, yeah, I know. So I'm like, we got all these toys, what do we do with it? You know, it's kind of like the, uh, the smart board craze. We got all these smart boards, what are we going to do with it? <laughs> you know, you could play PowerPoints on it and draw on it. 
But that, again, to me, is an improper use of technology. You could do so much more with it. But even smart boards, there's a limitation of what you can do with it um, as well. But that's another uh, uh, high rate. <laughs> OK, so, um, so anybody here wants to be convinced that, uh, that tablets are important? <coughs> Nobody? OK, good. So, so one of the things with this craze is like you know uh, is the understanding of why it's important, and, and one of the things I want to show you is why it's important for me. So, um, coming over here, one of the things I'm going to take you all through oops, is uh, the uh, what I call the uh, seven levels of. Is it is it really crackling? No, no, it's alright. Okay, good. It sounded like it was crackling. Uh, the seven levels of what I call seven levels of tablet knowledge. So over there, uh, we're standing in front of the screen. I uh, would be pointing out uh, level zero, the practical. So the practical is basically something that I'm going to be going over with you, where the uh, uh, talk about the, the, the practical accessories. Uh, I put a level zero in there because everyone says, okay, you, now you're going a little too far. You, you need to step it back a little. So I put that in there. Uh, level one is obvious uses for, uh, of the iPad, you know, beyond just email, web, 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 and things like that. So I'm going to show you some like really obvious little tips and tricks on how to maximize the usage of it. Uh, level two is the apps. So if you're coming here and you want you're, you're trying you want me to demonstrate 50 apps about uh, uh, the various things that you use in education, you're not going to get that. You're actually going to get a, a, a much more uh, focused approach on, on, on understanding the app ecosystem. So you too can can go out there and, and do better. Because, uh, because there are lists out there. I'm going to give you information on how to get to those lists, and and, uh, and and that's stuff that like you know I could be wasting my breath talking about math apps and and like you know 30 40 percent of the work. A lot of the rooms don't doesn't care about that, so uh, so we don't want to go into an app uh, uh, discussion here. Uh, level three, which is the level that which I'm going to be taking you all to, hopefully we have enough time to do that, is the creative apps, uh, what we call creative web apps, uh, utilizing uh, the cross-platform capabilities of the, these tablet devices. So we're saying that we're not just limited to just the iPads, so you can actually use multiple different browsers for the initiative of BYOD. Uh, level four is the imaginative. That's something that, like, you know, when you're a more seasoned user, anybody here consider? Go ahead, let me first describe it. Somebody who, like, you know, uses the apps can, can can dive into it, and you can like reimagine using it for other purposes than what it was originally designed for. Anybody here feel that way? All right, cool. So I have some gurus in here. All right, level five is unexpected. So basically, uh, you know, that's basically at a point where, like, you know, you're just using apps, and then all of a sudden a new capability comes comes unexpectedly, and you're like, wow, you know, you you. you you discover something new, that, uh, that uh, it, and that's why I call it unexpected. Uh, level six is the, the savvy. It's basically like you know really seasoned users who can like you know string multiple apps together, do many different things. Anybody here savvy? Savvy people? All right. And the last one, my most favorite, is the ludicrous level, or what we call ludicrous speed. Any people watch uh, Spaceballs in the eighties? <laughs> yes. All right. We got a few. Uh, actually, it seems to be very lost. Awesome. So that's, that's the ludicrous level. Nobody should get there. It's ludicrous. OK, so with that being said, um, uh, let's go back to the, uh, the presentation. So here, one of the things that I want to uh, say is that you know, I do tend to go fast. And I want to try to uh, relay as much information as possible. Because I'm going to give you resources to be able to access all the information from this presentation. So it's more like you know, something I want to expose. I want to share my knowledge and your knowledge. So I'm going to uh, uh, leave enough time so that you can uh, basically uh, share some of your experiences as well. Uh, in the past, there really wasn't a whole lot. But now we're getting more and more people. So we learn from each other. Um, but my biggest thing that I want to do is I want to change your mindset. I want to change your mindset about these tablets as more than just uh, a computing device. This is a post-PC era, as uh, the late Steve Jobs mentioned. And these devices are being reimagined for newer and better, better things. Um, and to dispel the myth that it's not a phone or a PC. Actually, I think I can do this laser and more. Okay. So, uh, so well, one of the key things is like you know, every one of us here, we're forging a new path. We're all pioneers. And because of that, there's no such thing as any experts. I don't claim to be an expert in this field. I just claim that I'm very much more experienced and ex overexposed on this material. I talk to a lot of teachers, a lot of administrators, I go out, visit schools, I do a lot of uh, different things with this, but I'm no, no expert because this hasn't been out long enough for anybody to become experts on this. So in, a, in itself, you guys are can be considered experts in your own uh, field as well. Because this, we're pioneering, we're doing something completely new with these tablets. 
So our goal is, my goal here is I want to lead you to the water so you can drink to it. Um, I'm not going to give you like specific things to do, but I'm going to lead you to the areas where you can find the information that you want to be able to find the solution. Um, I want you to make you comfortable with the device. In the past, I just kind of gave a general description, but I'm actually going to be doing a lot of little tips and tricks to make you pros. Because the way I think about it is, the more comfortable you are with these devices, the more after you're going to use it, the more the better off you'll be. Uh, I'm going to teach you to find multitasker apps. Basically apps that can do multiple things at once rather than a single solution. Because there's a lot of single solutions out there, like if you need a specific app to, for, a, for one type of math problem, there's, they're out there. You just find them. But the multitasker apps are the ones that you use on a more everyday basis. So I'm going to show you some of those. Um, and the, uh, and the last thing is like, you know, well, I want you to integrate this into your life. The more integration you have, the more apt you'll be able to uh, become experts on this and, and be able to, uh, to, to use it as a uh, professional uh, tool. Um, and the last point is like, you know, back to the parable, like, you know, teach, like, give a man a fish, you don't know, but I'm going to teach you all how to fish. Oh, and I forgot to tell, I need to tell you that I'm not a sales rep. I have to put that in there because people think I am. No, I'm just a crazy fanatic who, uh, who loves the, these devices. And you'll see in a second uh, uh, why. Uh, basically, what I, what I do uh, uh, is a, as a foreign business is I develop learning management systems online. We're using cloud-based solutions that work with this. Um, so that uh, basically what we do uh, is a mastery system. And, uh, I don't know if some of you that have gone into the, uh, the knowledge challenge, but we're deploying that here at the conference. For, that, for those of you to, to, uh, to participate in the mastery process. It's new technology, it's formative assessments, it's very advanced, and basically the way you think about it is it's like a, your personal tutor. You go to a personal tutor, you have, the tutor asks you questions, and the tutor tells you you need to go study these areas. And then if you go study, you go back to the tutor, and then the tutor will say, hey, you know, you're, uh, you're better at this area, so you know, you've improved and you've done course. So it's kind of like that technology. Um, so it's a master system, but the way that I currently make money, because I don't sell the platform, is uh, I develop three curriculum areas, culinary arts, food science, and family business sciences. So, so those three curriculum areas was the impetus of developing the technology. So we developed technology for the curriculum areas, and now those are the areas that, uh, that schools purchase and allows me to um, uh, eat, basically. <laughs> Okay, so this is the information that you can get to to get into the information. <coughs> I just said information twice. Now, this is the site that you, you use to get to the information. kbcompass.com, and the class code, or the course code, course code is that. So write that down. Now, if you're already in the Knowledge Challenge, you already have an account. So all you have to do is type that code into the course code field, uh, and then you'll, you'll be added into this class. So, so you have, you'll get all that information. And what I've done is I've, uh, I've uh, uh, divide it up into lessons, so you have like the slide information, and then uh, lots of uh, uh, lots of lists, lots of links to various places. Uh, places. Because the, the problem with uh, this uh, world right now is not the world, but this uh, this iPad world is that there's so much information out there. You start looking out there, your head's gonna swim, and you're, you're just gonna shut down. I mean, sometimes I feel that way too. Uh, so I've gone through and I vetted a, a bunch of uh, information and found some of the ones that may be most useful to, for you guys. Um, so you guys got that? I'll leave it up there for another minute. So, so basically, I put the information in our own learning platform, so you can actually go through the learning platform and through that information as well. And then you'll also be able to take a test uh, on some of the information and test your knowledge on that too. And eventually, after uh, this conference is over, I'm going to be developing this learning, system, learning module into an actual course so that you can actually take other people through it. Um, I haven't done that yet. Uh, because it takes time. <laughs> but I'm going to uh, probably do that over winter break. Um, so right now, and you're, feel free to share that code with other people. So has everyone got it? Good? All right, so let's move on. Okay, so with that being said, um, just kind of like a little history of like, you know, why this is important to me. So this is me as a kid. No, actually, no, it's not me. It's actually another, uh, just a Google uh, Chinese kid board in class. But I know that I was in class, too. Because the information didn't come to me fast enough. Uh, the, the, and that was the biggest problem. Like, you know, everyone, everything was paced. And, uh, but then, you know, one of the things that, like, you know, that really spoke out to me as a kid was technology. So this is the first piece of technology they got exposed to. So somebody probably recognizes this uh, circa 1979 uh, or something like that. Uh, Commodore Peck computer. Uh, 
So this was just sitting beside the, in the corner of the classroom, and a teacher let me play with it. And I discovered a whole new world. I was able to type letters and, and cause like numbers to fly around the screen. It was pretty pretty phenomenal. But uh, but one of the key things about tablets is that you know we imagined them back in the uh, back in the 60s with Gene Roddenberry's Star Trek. You know, you know I'm a little, little bit of a Star Trek geek uh, myself. Anybody here a uh, Trekkie? Yeah. All right, great, awesome. <laughs> Usually I get two or three, so I'm like completely wrong audience. <laughs> so but the thing is, like you know, we've always wanted devices that we can carry in our hands and interact with it. And here, like you know, here's a John Luke Picard in the Star Trek Next Generation, only an iPad that's looking device. Yeah. If uh, Steve Jobs was around, he'd probably sue him for that <laughs> in the future. <laughs> uh, bad show. Uh, so then, you know, formal computer become uh, imagined when these devices start coming out. We call them grips. They lasted 15 minutes, and you could do a few things on them. But then uh, the Palm came out, and they were really great little tools. But uh, but they were very limited because you had to use a stylus to interface with it. It was clunky. It, it was difficult to use, and uh, and not many people really dived into it. Uh, businesses did. But for me, it was a great way to keep contacts and keep your grocery list on it, right? <laughs> okay, so oops. All right, so then uh, in the, the mid-2005, uh, uh, tablet PCs came out. And that was actually a great realization of the Star Trek, uh, um, uh, Star Trek uh, what, what was imagined in Star Trek, <laughs> sorry. But, but the problem was that it ran a clunky operating system called Windows XP. So it really wasn't designed for touch. But then when Apple came out with this, they transformed the entire world uh, by doing that. Because one of the things with touch interface, and this is why it's, this is so much so important for us, is because it, it creates this connection like that you never have with a PC with a mouse or even a trackpad. You're, you're, you're touching the device, and that human element has really transformed how we engage with this, this medium. Which, and, and it's so natural that you know, kids just pick up on them and they just go with it. <coughs> so you know, we had other uh, tablets here, and then you know, the, the homage to like Steve Jobs for his amazing vision of uh, bringing these devices and at a very affordable uh, cost too. And affordable meaning that when tablets were co first coming up, I thought they'd be like $2,000. And I still buy one because, because that, that's what I wanted. <laughs> but when they came out for $500, it was just phenomenal. So in the end, I want you to think of your iPad as your Swiss Army knife of endless possibilities. <laughs> There's so many possibilities and so many tools for it that you can use for it. Now, I'm going to help you focus on the small little quadrant of it down there in the lower left-hand corner, or right-hand corner. Uh, and so, so you can become like uh, what I would call multitaskers. OK, so the very first thing I'm going to talk to you about is uh, bubble zero, the, uh, the bags. Uh, I don't see a lot of people pay a lot of money for cases and bags. So this is the one that, that I demonstrated this morning, which was this one here, my, uh, my, my iPad bag. Very convenient. $20. It was only $20. And it was actually not an iPad bag. It was a messenger bag, European messenger bag. So, so any, any bag can, can handle these things. And these things are really durable. They don't uh, scratch very easily. Uh, so you don't have to like you know, completely shell it all. I mean, I've, I've owned iPads. I've dropped them. I've thrown them. Uh, and they, they've done kind of not, not thrown them. Terribly, but you know, I, I toss them on tables and things like that. They're very durable. So, so you, know, you treat them gently, but you don't have to, you don't have to baby them. They're not made out of like, you know, shattered glass or something like that. Or something part of it. OK, so, so, so the other thing I want to mention is the stand. You know, this is very important to me. Because people spend way too much money on them. This is an iPad stand. <laughs> what is this, everybody? Picture like frame holder that collapses. That's so even better. <laughs> Nothing like that. Like 80 bucks. So these simple little devices can act as an iPad holder. And it's adjustable. Works really well on planes. And it's only $2.99 at Joanne Fabrics. <laughs> <laughs> no, I am not a Joanne Fabrics rep. <laughs> um, so, so it's just simple something like this. It makes wonderful iPad stands. Can everyone hear me fine when I was doing that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, it's like, I, I don't like standing behind. I feel so claustrophobic back there. Which I Now, the key, wireless keyboard is a very important accessory because typing on these things, especially the mini, a lot of people find it difficult. Like, you know, a lot of people buy cases with these keyboards, but they're really useful. But, but the point about these keyboards is that, and that's the difference between a PC or a laptop uh, and a, and a uh, tablet, is that they're not permanently married to it. 
Because when you're using these devices, you don't have to use a keyboard all the time. Like if this is a 10%er. You use it 10% of the time. So you use it for specific applications. So 90% of the time, you're not saddled with the, the keyboard with the device. So it's important. But they're, they're very good and they're really cheap, only 80 bucks. Uh, another important accessory that a lot of teachers need to pick up with, well, with the new iPad, but <coughs> well, these are the dock connectors for the, for the camera. And what it does is it allows you to be able to stick a memory card uh, or a USB thumb drive into the, and, and import the pictures right into your uh, device. So it's a $20 or $30 accessory. It's very useful. Uh, little tool. So you can plug it in and you can pull it right into the uh, $30. How much? Yeah, no, oh, $30, sorry, $30. It's been a while since I bought it. Uh, that's the uh, camera connection kit. So if you're out there taking taking pictures with a device, like an old-fashioned camera with a memory card, that's how you can uh, get your pictures into the iPad very quickly and easily. Might be awesome. uh, so the other uh, essential tool that uh, every, every educator should have is uh, the, the dongle there. That's a VGA can, uh, cable. So it allows you to hook up your iPad to a projector using a cable. As you can see, I'm not using a cable because I'm using a better piece of technology. But that's uh, a twenty or thirty dollar uh, piece right there. The problem is that you have to be connected to it all the time, which really sucks. So before this, uh, what I'm going to show you in a minute, came out, I had to be tethered to a wire. <laughs> and I don't like that. All right. So then this next one is the HDMI uh, cable. So if you have an HD TV, this will connect you or your uh, your HD TV and do the same exact thing. But then again, you're still wired. Um, so the next one I'm going to show you, which uh, I already got some questions on earlier, is how I'm doing this wirelessly. I'm doing this wirelessly using an Apple TV. So the Apple TV, which is, you can see up there, is connected to a, uh, a, a box that's, that's connected to the projector. So this is actually really cool. So that piece of technology is only $100, which is not much for a little interface device. So you're thinking about like $100 to connect your device to, piece to your projector. Uh, but the problem with the Apple TV as is is that it only has HDMI out. Uh, so that means you have to only connect, you can only connect it to an HD TV. Um, not until about uh, April of last year, uh, a company came out with this device. Here we go. So there's the this box here that's connected to it. This is uh, a box. This is a box called. Can you hear me with that? No. No. This is a box called. Oh, it's kind of hard to say. Uh, uh, it's uh, made by ATV Pro. It's all, it, all the information is in the site, but it's ATV Pro. And the reason this is significant is because they've had HDMI to VGA converters before, but they were like two, three hundred dollars and required power and uh, and like you know and, and they're really expensive. They came out with this, no power, just plug it in. 60 bucks. So basically, this entire setup here is $160. I guess uh, you, uh, I guess it all depends on your budget and and, um, and uh, if that's a lot or not. There you go. <laughs> so so uh, those are uh, some really good little accessories. Yes. Did you call that Yes. Yeah, it's, and it's called AT, the manufacturer is ATV Pro. Canix, yes, Canix. Oh, you know it. Okay, cool. Oh, you do you know it? Awesome. Are you rep? Okay. <laughs> Canix is the manufacturer, and the, the product is called ATV Pro. K A N E X. Yes. Oh, other than Apple, uh, unfortunately, they don't have the, the, the Google. Well, that they, I think the Google. Uh, uh, what was that? No, the, well, I, I, I'm not sure if they actually do that uh, wireless interface or not. Unfortunately, yes. We connected the TV to the projector, but there's no sound. Is there something? Oh yeah, the uh, ATV Pro down here has a uh, audio out, so you can just uh, wire it in. There it is. So this is the. Uh, oh, that's it. 
So, 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 so the, the box, you know, once you permanently mount it, you can run all the wires to it uh, that you need. Um, uh, with, the, with the cable, you have to still jack a uh, cord into the, uh, into the uh, stereo output. Okay, so that's, uh, so that's some, some level zero accessories. I know that this probably is beneath a lot of you, so anybody here find that important, important and informative? All right. Oh, only half of you can run your hands. Okay, so now we're going to go to level one, obvious uses. So, so this portion, actually, what time do I have to tell? 30. Huh? 30. Okay, good. Good one, John. I'm just making sure. Okay, so one of the things that, like, you know, I find a lot of people who are using this device is that they're, they're not maximizing the power based on just simple little tricks. One of the uh, more simple tricks is uh, this one. You know how when you double click the home button, you can pop open the, the selection? Which, actually, wait, you can't see that here. I was in picture mode, so I, you can see. Right now I'm in straight, straight screen. Ah. I'm going to go to screen mirroring mode. Screen mirroring mode. There we go. Okay. Alright, so here's screen mirroring mode. Oh, somebody mentioned me on Twitter. Nice. <laughs> okay, so here, like, you know, you double click and you could pop, pop up in this, uh, like, little taskbar here. And so a lot of people already know how to do that, right? So that's a way we call it task switcher. But another way to do it is uh, if you were to uh, take your four of your fingers or five and you swipe up on the screen. You can do that too. You can get your two task switcher. It's a very simple little trick. It makes it so much so you can switch between apps much quicker and easier. So when I was on stage earlier, I was switching between apps. Actually, I wasn't using that. I was using another function. So let me go to a, another app. So let's go to uh, let's go to Zoom. Let's go to Chrome. Alright, so I'm in an app right now. And to go, if you go back to the home screen, everyone knows how to hit the home button. But you can also take your same five fingers and you can do this too. You can squeeze it away. It's another really cool little trick to be able to uh, get to your home button, so you don't have to hit that home button every time. So going back to uh, going back to here again, so it's not connected to the network right now. If you wanted to switch between apps, same five fingers, swipe to the left. So and the same thing, you can go uh, to the right too. It's just a cute little trick, but it makes it so much e so much easier now, now knowing that you can do that. So this is all level one stuff. Like, you know, it's very obvious things, but the thing is, like, you know, for me, I take it for granted, and I realize that most of you don't uh, know how to do these things, and that's my problem. I, I admit that I have a problem with uh, taking things for granted. Okay, so so. Pretty cool. Anybody here already knew the five finger swipe? I, want to, I just want to see a raise of hands. All right, good. So I, so I got some people here who have already been exposed to it. So, uh, some of the conferences I did over the summer, one or two people. You know, so it's uh, definitely a cute little trick. <coughs> uh, another trick uh, that I just wanted to kind of, kind of point out is like, you know, if you are in the keyboard, so here I'm pulling up some information, uh, you know you, have, you can type on it and stuff, and the automatic corrects it, so, but here's, here's the cool thing. Let's say you want to do a capital, uh, <coughs> capital O. So you can hold your finger down on the uh, on the shift key and just drag it over to the O. There we go. Now you have a capital O, capital, and question mark, question mark, question mark. You know, so it's, a, it's a basically a little trick to be able to say, I want to shift this or something like that with one hand. So you can, in case you can't do shift and then type. You, you just drag your finger from the shift key to the letter you want. Ah, I had an old wow moment here. Awesome. Okay, so, so these are just little trip, tip, tips and tricks. But remember, I want to make you uh, really great uh, users of it so that when I get when you get to the list, you're, you're able to wade through it. Because the, the thing is, like, you know, these are devices and tools that can do so much more than just run apps. You know, if you just do it, use it to, to do nothing but run apps, then you're just you having a small portion of percentage of, of what you can do. Apps are there. Those are unitasker uh, tools uh, because they're designed for a specific uh, purpose to be able to uh, find a specific solution. 
So that's just a quick little trick that, uh, that helps you be able to do that. Um, for those of you who want to connect to the Apple TV, uh, if you swipe to the right, you'll see that uh, you get a little media control area. Uh, this button down here is uh, how I control the interface. So if, if you're connected to the Apple TV, which actually, by the way, requires wireless. So I'm running a wireless hub here. But that's why I'm able to connect to it. So I was going to explain to somebody, this is how I do this like really crazy uh, presentation. Most people rely on the standard PC with a uh, PowerPoint slide, and that's the old reliable. Ah, that's boring. So what I've done is like I brought my own equipment, and I brought uh, Apple TV, hooked it up to the thing, and see all the connections, I brought my own wireless hub, so I can wirelessly connect myself to the different devices so I could do this. And normally I would be roaming around the room wirelessly. So, so, but the thing is, when you're in the classroom, you have this all set. You don't have to worry about all the uh, different intricacies of the technical. And, and your technician will be able to very easily uh, figure out how, how to get it all set up properly. So that's how you get to the, the settings is by going to the left. And you can also do the views here. Actually, yours is rotate. Speaking of rotate, uh, you know the little switch up here uh, that, that, that uh, you switch and it turns, to, turns your mute on, right? Yeah. You, the, the, there's a little switch up here that you switch. Which then, when you switch it, it mutes your the button, your iPad, right? Yeah. Now that's default setting. It's completely worthless. When somebody go, when is somebody going to call you when when, um, when you need to mute your your iPad? You know, if you play Angry Birds, you know you're going to play Angry Birds. <laughs> so a lot of people don't uh, realize that there's a wonderful little setting very down here uh, in the general tab. You see there in the middle, it says use slide switch to lock rotation. Now that's much more useful because you know how you're like doing this and that and it's rotating it. And you're like, oh gosh, you know, stop doing that, you know, being busy. So I locked it. Now, now I want to change it again. Unlock, change, lock. So it makes it much more useful. And I don't understand why Apple uh, defaulted to that. Um, so anyway, So that's just like a uh, really uh, simple little um, uh, tip to make it a lot more useful. A lot of people uh, don't uh, see that. Okay, so those are some very obvious little tips. There's a lot more. There's actually a document in the uh, in the site that basically goes outlines about 50 really useful tips uh, that uh, make your experience a lot better. So, Where are they? Uh, it's, it's on the website that I gave you earlier, babycompass.com and Clark's code, but it has all the information. Yeah, we're doing this all digital, so no handouts, no paperwork. We don't, we don't want to kill trees. You don't want to plug lots of stuff back. Oh. I need some water, sorry. <laughs> yeah, where's my drinking water app? <laughs> cool. Uh, how's level one? Useful? You like it? Yes. All right. Let's get to level two apps. Now this is going to be like a kind of like a, a, a overview of some really useful apps that you can do a lot more uh, with it. Now this this is a unit tester, but this is something this is probably one of the few unit testers that I'm going to show you. Uh, this one up here on the upper right hand corner or left hand corner. Wait, you're right, my left, right? Yeah. Uh, it's called speed test. Now this is very important because if, if you're ever working in an environment, um, especially in an unknown environment like this. You want to know what kind of uh, uh, bandwidth. So if you're like at Starbucks, you run this, you go, okay, I got good bandwidth. Or if you're at a hotel, you run it, you go, okay, I got really poor bandwidth. This this app tells you uh, how, what kind of experience you're going to expect. Right now, I actually went offline, so right now I'm not going to be testing. But the general rule of thumb is thumb is uh, uh, one megabit is adequate. Three megabits or three thousand kilobits is, uh, is good for streaming. Uh, in higher, it's even better. Like if, when you're in your school network, you should be expecting anywhere between three to five, hopefully, hopefully. Um, <clears throat> but then, you know, really poor is anything below like 500. So that, that's when you like you're waiting for things to download. So this is a very important app because it tells you, it kind of tells you, you know, side, what's sideways there? Uh, the, uh, what kind of environment you're in? Oh, it wasn't. Yes, I see it here. No, no, there is no way to, you have to have Wi-Fi for these. Or, or you go for a cellular carrier, yeah, for, the, for your wireless. So. But especially good if you have a 3G connection or, or LTE, 4G, is that you can do, like when I showed up to Atlanta, I have a 4G LTE. 
I tested it, it tested at one megabit. That's like 3G speeds, that's terrible. Uh, so, but then, but then I knew like, you know, I'm, I'm in for a world hurt because I'm not getting the speeds I need. Uh, but, but the, you know, it, it, it lets you know what to expect. <coughs> and then you can take corrective action. So that's a very important one. Um, another one that I'm going to show you here is called, uh, over here, uh, the green one over there called Goodreader. Now Goodreader is a good reader. It's a five dollar app. This is one of the only few apps that I'm going to show you that actually costs money. Uh, other, I'm not a good reader app, uh, rep either. <laughs> Uh, but this is something that uh, really uh, uh, does a great job at reading documents, reading uh, reading the uh, like, you know, like program guide. Mm -hmm. and, but the thing is, you can do a lot more than just read. Uh, you can like you know, uh, bookmark it, you can draw on it, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. There's actually apps out there that are like cheaper than this. That you can do a lot of annotations. I'm going to show you some really crazy things that you can do with this that's more of level four uh, type of implementation besides just reading PDF documents. But you can read documents, you can read uh, the spreadsheets, you can read PDFs. You can, uh, almost anything can be read using this uh, app. But one of the key things that makes this really special and it's worth the money is uh, if you look down down there, I, unfortunately I can't point to it, but uh, there's like a little like wireless icon in the mid down in the middle. Uh, if you hit it, what I've done is I've actually turned this uh, iPad into a wireless document server. So anybody within the same Wi-Fi, and if they type in that uh, URL up there, it looks really blurry to me. Is it really blurry? Yes. Yeah. Okay, well, just pretend that's a URL. Uh, um, if they type that in, then they can have access to the documents that I have stored on this uh, device. So that's one really cool thing. What's the name of that app again? Good Reader. And, uh, and there's other things that you can do with it as well. Like you can manage files, you can do all these different things down here. Uh, you could like, you know, if you go to a, uh, a site on Safari and it pulls up a PDF document and you want to download it, you can copy the URL and then just come over here to web download and then say enter URL and then it'll, it'll put the uh, URL in there for you and then you can download it offline into your uh, um, and you can even connect it to like if you have like you know, cloud services like uh, Google Docs, Google Drive, Dropbox, which I'm going to go over next. And you can directly link it, this uh, reader into a cloud service. Now speaking of cloud services, um, I'm going to move on to that next one. We have here is uh, Dropbox over here on the top uh, left blue one. Now Dropbox, well, unfortunately, you know, since we don't have internet connection now because I had to kill it, um, uh, allows you to be able to access what we call uh, a cloud uh, file storage system. Dropbox and Google Drive uh, are both free. Dropbox gives you two gigs free, Google Drive gives you five gigs free. Each one offers different benefits and drawbacks to it. Like Google Drive integrates right into your Google Docs accounts. So, uh, if anybody use Google Docs here? All right, so that's a great thing to do. Uh, and so, but Google Drive only came out three, two, three months, two months ago actually. So it's a brand new app. Uh, and they're like you know, trying to compete with the Dropbox space, um, but they support like you know all different formats. So you can sync a folder up to, to your Google Docs, uh, to Google Drive, or your Dropbox account, and then basically your files on your folder will automatically be put into the cloud. Now the reason we put them into the cloud is so that we can use other other means to pull them from the cloud onto our devices when we're on the go. So Dropbox is a cloud-based uh, conduit that allows you to be able to access your documents or your files from anywhere, but you have to have an internet source. That's why Goodreader is a good companion, because then you can download it from Dropbox and put it into Goodreader and bring it what we call offline mode. Now, offline mode is, is really is when you like, you know, when you go offline, basically. But you don't want to have everything off on your device because that clutters it up. So you only pull stuff down that you need, and you get rid of it uh, when you don't, but everything always stays in the cloud. OK, so that's Dropbox. And then here's uh, Google Drive over here. Uh, there you go. There, that's a good way to do it. So, everyone knows how to do wiggle mode, right? Oh, no? Okay. Wiggle mode is very important because it allows you to move your apps around on your device. All right, so go back to level zero again. Uh, no, no, that's level one, sorry. Uh, this, is, this is actually one of those obvious things that I failed to mention. But, um, but it allows you to, to get into wiggle mode, you, you hold down on an icon, and it goes into wiggle mode. Yeah. And you can move it around. You can move it off the page, and it goes to the next page. 
and drop it off here, or you can drop it over here. It automatically arranges for you. Um, if you hold it over another app, it'll automatically create a folder for you, name it according to its proper category, and now you create folders. So you can see I have a lot of folders of apps. So to get out of logo mode, because I actually demonstrated this once and somebody didn't know how to do this, <coughs> is to hit the uh, home button. <coughs> I'm glad, sorry, yeah. I know a lot of people already know this, so it's you know, probably uh, very redundant, but, uh, but I guess it's important for those who don't know it. <laughs> so um, so that's um, that's Google Drive and Google uh, and, and Dropbox. Very important services, they're both free. Another really great service um, is called AirVideo. Now I can't connect to it right now, but what AirVideo is, is it allows you to install a program on your computer, so it's up there on the upper left of the screen. Uh, maybe wiggle mode it. There you go. You can see it now. So, uh, so when you install this app, you point it to a folder, and when, what it does is it, it, it does a what I call a live conversion of the video into a streamable format. So you can actually uh, watch videos from your hard drive using that app. That app actually does cost money. I think it's five dollars or something like that. But but but. It, the cool thing is that it actually converts the video to a streamable format, so it's not just a direct play. Uh, you have to have a decent PC to be able to run it, to be able to stream it at a, at a, at a quality. Um, that's not the requirements aren't that high, so that's called Air Video up there on the left. Yes, left. Um, one of the things that uh, you can use is the camera app. As you saw me demonstrate earlier, you can use the camera app, app as a document camera. So you can show different things to your students. Uh, the, talk about you know, elaborating different ideas. So this is really cool you would use of a camera app that will connect to a projector. <laughs> Say hi, everybody. There you go. Take that picture. OK. So, so those are some of the apps that are really useful. And, uh, and actually, let me go over here. And I'm going to show you a couple one, uh, other ones. Oh, that's my games. Okay. See, I play a lot of games. <laughs> yeah, I'm a big gamer. So you can see how I'm still big hit at heart. Um, over here, uh, there's two apps here in the middle called Teacher and uh, Student. It's actually not called Teacher Student, it's called Socrative. Socrative is actually designed to replace those interactive clickers. Now those clickers are really nice, but a lot of teachers don't use it because you have to set up all these different things to make it work right, and, and, and sometimes it's very complicated. I mean, the power users may do amazing things with it, but, uh, but the problem is like you know most everyday uses, if you want to set up a simple little quiz, you have to jump through all these hoops. What Socrative does is it's, a, it's an app and a web-based uh, program that allows you to be able to uh, kind of like do what you do with, um, gosh, what was that interactive polling thing? Poll Everywhere. Kind of like what Poll Everywhere does, but this is free. Uh, Poll Everywhere is free too, but they have limits. This is free, 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 free. So you actually have your teacher app, which you can set up uh, quizzes and tests on, and then you, and the students will enter a classroom, and they'll be able to interact with it. You say, launch the quiz, you can get paid, <coughs> you do like, you know, all, you know, whenever they get it all done, you'll get like, all, all this reporting data, and it's free. I love it. We all love free stuff, right? Yeah. Except, you know, you want to pay for my curriculum, because I work hard for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, eventually, you know, if I get, you know, wealthy enough, maybe I'll, I'll be a Bill Gates or something. Um, Educations, the, uh, the, the one next to the Science 360, this is really awesome. Because what it is, it's like, you know, anybody here uh, seen the Khan Academy uh, or Khan Academy type videos? You know how he draws on the stylus? So education uses that same same technique. So here I am, I could be like, you know, I could you know, draw something like, you know, 2 plus 2 equals 8, but that's only on the, so the planet Pluto, which is not a planet anymore. And, uh, <laughs> And, and basically, as you're doing this, you can record this, and it's recording your voice as you're drawing on this uh, thing. So you can be doing lo lots of various things as you're going around. You can insert pictures, type text. It's a really cool free app that allows you to be able to do Khan Academy-like videos. So after you're done with this, you can export it. You can upload it to uh, their servers so that other teachers can, can view your presentation as well. It's called Edu Creations. Yeah. Oops. There we go. My handwriting is atrocious. Well, my finger painting is atrocious. No, actually, I could have just typed it here. 
Now, I'm actually pretty good at touch type balancing. I get about 80, 60 to 80 words per minute. The key with this keyboard is that you don't look at it. That's a trick. If you look at it, you're going to want to try to hit the keys and it assembles you. Just don't look at it. Just use your natural, if, you're, if your touch type is that. Uh, you'll actually figure out that when you hit J and you really have to hit H, it actually changes the word for you. It's pretty intelligent. I love it. So anyway, uh, that's more Okay, so that, those are some really cool apps. There's a, there's a slew of more, but I don't want to be, I don't want to bore you with, I'm not kidding. Uh, with uh, with, uh, with the, just an inundation of apps. But those are some really key, uh, <coughs> important ones that uh, really make a, a difference with uh, what you can do. Like, you know, you can, uh, oh, here's one more, Pocket. You know, Pocket's a good offline reader. Uh, what it does is it allows you to take articles, tag them on your computer or tag them on your device, and then you can uh, look at, like, you know, uh, you can read articles when you're offline. So what it does is it downloads the article, and then uh, you can actually read it offline. Because what it does is it takes a web page and converts it and just pulls just the information you need off it. So which is the pictures and the text. So it pulls all the, it removes all the rest of the, what we call crud. Uh, away from it. So actually I have one that's downloaded that in that mode. I'm not going to find it, but it's, it's called Pocket. It's great, great. So, all right, so on in the KB Compass site with the class code that you wrote down earlier, uh, do you want me to pull that back up again before I go to level three and then we'll finish off? Mm -hmm. Anybody? No? Yes? Yeah, yes. Okay, let me pull yeah. that up again. All right. So let's see here. Okay. So there's the uh, URL again. So you go to the site, and then you type in the class <coughs> code after you create an account. After you create an account. You know, so you have to have a student account first. And don't worry, we won't email you. It's against our policy to email students. So you're a student. And after you get in there, you have like a bevy of information to go through, uh, all organized uh, fairly well, and I'm going to be expanding it into an actual course. Uh, because uh, before st speaking about this, I didn't think that uh, people would actually pay me to do this, but recently I got contacted by a school district who's flying me out to do a uh, uh, training for 80 teachers uh, in, a, in, in a week and a half. So, <laughs> so I'm like, oh cool, I guess I could do that. Uh, uh, even though my primary business is, uh, is the curriculum, but so, y'all got that? All right, let's talk about level three, web apps. Now, web apps are really cool because what it does is allow you to do a cross-platform. So, you know, everything I've showed you here is like, you know, iPad-specific. iPad apps, iPad solutions, iPad, this, that, or the other. Because we're, we were talking about, like, you know, unit, uh, unit and multitaskers for the device. But, like, you know, if, if uh, web apps, um, like, like what I was going to tell you, like I mentioned earlier, I'm going to show you, like, a, a platform that I built, which is actually a web app. So, so what a web app is, is basically utilizing the power of, uh, of a website to be able to create application-specific tools so that you don't have to download an app. Now, the advantage of a web app is that uh, you don't have, you're not married to the device. So the problem with a lot of these devices and apps is that the information is stored on the device, so you're, you, you, you can't, you can't cross-port uh, cross, uh, the information. But uh, the KB Compass site that we developed uh, is a web app. So all you do is you go to the site, like the one that you're going to. This is teacher mode, so you can actually see more in teacher mode than in student mode. But but then uh, but then you basically uh, log in, and then all your information is stored in the cloud. So no matter what where you're at, so you can pick up this this device, I can pick up that device, I can pick up that Android device, I could be on my uh, iPhone here, and I could have the same exact experience. Uh, not the same, but it's smaller, but you know, it transforms itself. But um, but we do all this so that um, the information is right, uh, we access it from any device. And that's, that's the key because like, we don't want to establish students with just a single device. And that's why web apps are important. So uh, just a brief on the, uh, the KB Compass platform. So what you're seeing here is like this is a teacher view. Like I have folks that are using uh, teaching classes over there on the left. But yeah. And, um, and the key with the, with the way that we've uh, arranged our system is that uh, we have content information and we have learning objectives. And the students will go through those, those learning objectives. They read the information and then they, uh, they take a test. So this is just like an you know, standard test. But it's a formative test. So it's a completely formative exam. It's pulled from a large bank of questions, as you can see here. So each page of content has a large bank of questions. This is what we call abundant assessments and item response theory, a piece of the technology that we're using. 
And basically with that, they would go in and they would uh, take the test. And based on how they performed, we'd give them colored indicators as to uh, areas that they need to study. Red options seeming bad, green meaning good. <coughs> uh, so you can think of this as uh, your personal tutor. I think I gave you that analogy earlier today. Yeah. So your personal tutor says you need to go study these areas. The key to our entire uh, structure is that we never tell them what questions they got right or wrong. Because that's not, that's not high rigor. That's actually just telling them you know, what to study for. What we want them to do is to go back to those pages of information and, and master that content. You know? So what we're trying to do is, like, if you're familiar with the rigor relevance framework, is take the students in the quadrant A environment. You, you can't do quadrant D through an online source, but put them at the top most corner of quadrant A so they can easily transition to quadrant D in, the, uh, in, the, uh, in their learning. So as they're going through this, you know, as a teacher, you get really cool little like reports, like you know, color indicators of mastery, how many times they've taken the test. If you really want to see like the questions that they've answered, you can actually uh, dive into that. So the, one of the big reasons I'm showing you this is like we're looking for uh, schools to pilot uh, this platform, and uh, we've actually got quite a few already, and we're looking for more. Um, so if you're interested in piloting this, I can convert your student account to a teacher account so you can actually do it. Because one of the things is like you know, we have our curriculum that's in there, but you can actually put your own content right into the platform and add it to the, to the mix and, and you know, generate mastery. So, um, and the tools are very easy. Because uh, you got to remember, our, our background is that uh, my, my target market is color and arts teachers, or in other words, uh, veteran chefs. And uh, I'm not a knock on chefs, but a lot of chefs are not the most computer literate people in the world. And those are the people that I actually get them to use this platform, and they love it. Okay, so this is one web app. Now another one that uh, they, is, uh, just write this down, it's called Trello, T-R-E-L-L-O. -L -L -O. Trello is a, is a free one. And actually, when I was talking about the KD Compass platform, the pilot, it's, uh, it's, I'm not charging for it, so I'm looking for cool, dedicated individuals. Uh, so in other words, free, but I want you to use it. Um, so Trello is a really cool uh, organization that allows you to be able to uh, do a, a cloud-based system. So you can do like, um, uh, uh, pro like you can manage like a list and to-do list. It's, it's like basically to-do list on steroids, and it does it so well that uh, it's it's something that I've, I've I've used a lot of project management software before. And this one not only is free, but it's 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 a it's a web app. So yeah, I could use like, any device and I could know where all the projects are. You can assign students to it, and then, and you actually have an activity log that's tracked on everything they've done. Um, so there's a really cool YouTube video. Uh, I would actually pull it up if I was on the web, but unfortunately I had to shut that down. Uh, otherwise, I would demonstrate my Trello app, <laughs> not my app. Actually, that's it's developed by another, uh, but my Trello account, so that you can see how it works. It's, it's a very beautiful app, and it's. Uh, and uh, I, I actually have a lot of teachers who have uh, used it and they, they love it. So. so just check it out. There's a cool YouTube video, and uh, you can go from there. So, so with the uh, with the web apps, the biggest advantage is that you know you can do it from anywhere. But the biggest disadvantage is that you have to have an active Wi-Fi connection. So that's a trade-off. You have to be connected. But that's that's the world that we're going to. We're we're going to an online world. We're going to an interconnected world. We're going to a world where basically you, know, you always have the information at your fingertips. You never go offline. And that's the world that our students are uh, going into. <coughs> that's the world that I'm living in, and that's the world that, that we need to be prepared for. Because with the students of tomorrow using the technologies of yesterday, you know, we're doing them a disservice by forcing them into that horrible path that I had to be forced down through. And for, unfortunately, you know, there was technology wasn't there. But I adapted. But not all students adapt. By putting these, like, the, that wonderful magical devices in their hands, <coughs> it creates engagement, it creates a, a level of, uh, of, of intimacy that, that, that really gets and draws them in. And I think that's one of the most important things that we can take away from the iPad uh, platform, or any touch platform, is that it is something that we can relate to as human beings. We're not distanced like, uh, like a mouse or keyboard anymore. And then we can interact with it. We can find the apps that we need to for our solution because people are making solutions for everything because it's popular, it's useful, and Apple has really done a great job at controlling that ecosystem so that people can develop it really easily. Not a knock on Android devices, but developing on that thing is a pain. Okay, so that's why a lot of people don't do it. 
Uh, so that's why I support Apple, because they're controlling it, and you want to have a nice controlled environment, especially in education, that, that gives you that level of control. So I'd like to thank you very much for your time, for attending my ICAS session. Uh, there's a congratulation. Let's be honest. Tell me if you're one. Thank you.